How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Level M Diecast here. Of course, we are going to recap the 2023 Matchbox Gathering slash convention that just happened down there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Of course, giving you the treatment here, you walk right into the lobby. When you check into the Marriott, you see the nice banner up there that says, Welcome Collectors to the convention for the 21st annual. Of course, we did not have one in 2020, which was unfortunate, but this is the 21st annual uh, international gathering of friends and convention of course there is matchbox and hot wheels both on the banner never been a huge fan of that um hot wheels gets a lot of their own conventions every year i really think that uh they can leave it off for just just once i i really think so um as far as t-shirts go of course there is a t-shirt there's always a t-shirt every year um sometimes they go really quick sometimes they don't sell very fast but of course this is the one for this year in blue it does have 70th anniversary logo on the front this is the back uh, if you are a staff event, uh, you know, employee, I guess, or somebody helping out, uh, you get essentially the same shirt, but it is red. Uh, looks a little bit better. Of course, designed by Michael Geralda for sure. They did some interesting stuff this year. They did a pin set, which was pretty cool. These are metal pins, um, which is, you know, really good quality. They're really, really nicely detailed. There is your Superlift uh, F350 right there. Uh, does have the updated 70th anniversary logo for the rear window there. Um, the real one that was there that Abe drove down there also had the logo on there, which is pretty cool. And there is, of course, is the 70th anniversary logo. Now, the keychain is one of the coolest things ever, and I really wish I would have got more of these. Um, so the three the three pieces of this was 25 bucks. It was 25 bucks for the three pieces, uh, but you could buy them individually as well. This is a super, super cool piece. This keychain is really cool. So this is a double-sided keychain. A lot of people think there was two keychains down there. There's only one. Um, this side is kind of a little bit more older throwback, um, kind of a little bit more eighties ish, I guess, kind of flair, um, with the logo. At least that's the way that I kind of gather it just has some orange on the outside. Nothing big, nothing fancy there. Uh, but the other side is the full color side and the other side is really, really, really nice. The orange and the yellow. Uh, and of course with matchbox and all these are very, very good quality, uh, keychains, uh, for sure. Obviously, if you use it as a real keychain with it clanking on keys all the time, not really sure how long it would last, but it looks super, super cool. Of course, they had a couple of cakes when you did the uh, meet and greet. So basically, when you after you check in, you come down in this room, uh, and then you would just kind of um, you know mingle with everybody else, say hi to the people you haven't seen for a while. Of course, there is a 70th anniversary logo there uh, for that particular cake. And then, of course, they had another cake, uh, which was a little bit more designed for the actual 21st convention itself a um, little bit of a you know kind of a new mexico ish flair to it uh, which i thought was pretty cool uh one of the funniest things that happened at the uh, meet and greet was they unveiled this radar dish now if you guys are fans of kind of the gathering or if you're kind of in the know uh, especially things between michael Ralda and jim gallegos um there's this ongoing uh joke that this is going to be a dinner model this radar truck the one of the absolute worst castings they've ever made uh, but they made custom uh dinner models okay it was funny because there were actually guys there at the uh, convention who thought that these are going to be uh the actual dinner models and they look legitimate they do have a e-style sheet they're signed um it's a little it's a little funny it's a little funny uh, but it's it wasn't the dinner model it wasn't the dinner model so um, Mike Heralda got one and Jim got one. So there are only two in existence. They are actually quite detailed. They're quite quite nice, uh, but they're just a custom one-off thing kind of done as a joke, uh, which I think was uh, was pretty funny. I think it was pretty funny. I think that was uh, a good fit to it. It was it was all in fun, fun and games and all that good stuff like that. All right, once the convention kicked off, of course, you know, you had, um, you know, in-room trading. So... Just rolling through some stuff here. I didn't get a chance to do all that much in-room trading. As far as me going to other rooms, I had tons of people come to my room, um, which was all fine and dandy, but uh, it it was kind of frustrating. It was kind of frustrating because I really wanted to get out and get some more. I did buy that that flag right there. That's a custom-made flag, which is pretty cool. Um, some of this other stuff, yeah, just a little bit of everything here and there. Uh, nothing fancy with it. Um, just really, really you know, unique stuff. People had a lot of pre-pros. Um, there was a lot of uh, kind of one-off style stuff or stuff that was was kind of rare. And I guess I guess the vibe from a convention is you kind of get that. Um, 
but I really feel like, at least in my opinion, there wasn't a lot of stuff that was just um, generalized, uh, just a little bit of kind of an everything flavor. A lot of convoys here. Some of these are pre pros Actually, a lot of these are pre-pros. Um, this particular seller had just a ton of stuff. I thought they were kind of cool. Um, definitely nothing that I would have picked up. They just, you know, not really fit in my vibe all that much. Um, but then, of course, you did have the rooms with main lines and... Um, you know, it is a convention, so, you know, prices are prices. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not not trying to downgrade anybody or, or boast myself or anything, but, you know, I really probably had the best prices of anybody at the convention. Now, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't have, and I didn't have the best selection of everything, but, um, you know, I, I, in my opinion, I'm really down there to propagate the, the um, collecting community, and I'm not down there to try to make money. I'm just trying to down there to be fun and do some cool stuff and whatnot. Uh, moving on from that, though, I mean, as far as some other in-room trading stuff, um, I did find this piece. I um, was a little bit bummed out because I really wanted this piece. Yes, it's not a Matchbox item, but uh, it's the only 935 casting that I don't have. It's the only version I don't have, and it's extremely, extremely rare. Um... I think I could have got this for maybe like a maybe like a buck fifty ish, maybe somewhere around a hundred bucks, hundred and fifty dollars, somewhere around there. But uh, I just I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It was just really expensive for one piece, but I really really wanted it. Um, you know, moving on from that, uh, some other stuff that was there. You know, just you know, Hot Wheels was kind of crazy. You know, people charging just insane amounts of of dollars for just basic main lines. Some Zamics, you know, just just crazy amount of stuff. I mean, even the Boulevard stuff that's just dropping. I mean, twenty dollars a car, um, it's just it's just unheard of, you know. And I, like I said, I'm not trying to bash anybody, um, but I mean, just the prices were just insane this year. The prices were just all over the place, um, you know, for Matchbox and Hot Wheels alike. But there was mainly a lot of Hot Wheels stuff. That happens. It just happens there. It's it's not a big deal. Of course, I stayed in room ten fifteen, um, which you know, was way up there. I, I think I only had one other guy on my floor who was doing in-room trading, which was very, very frustrating. Um, I did do a video, which basically just ran down everything I picked up on the first day. So I kind of threw that together. You guys already saw that, threw that up on the channel. Uh, moving on from that, of course, there was a, you know, car show on Saturday. Um, just a couple of, you know, interesting cars, nothing fancy, nothing, you know, particularly out there. I did a little bit of a photo dump for some of these cars and stuff like that. Um, they also did a scavenger hunt on uh, starting on Saturday, and they carried it over to Sunday. They were hiding some FEPs. Of course, I did uh, get lucky enough to pull this Pierce Dash, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, grab that one from the inner stairwell. There is your FEP number. Of course, it is number five. Um, I have already moved that particular piece off to a... Uh, particular emergency and pierce collector um that will definitely enjoy it um fep is not my style uh but moving on from that i did find one other fep of course it was a volkswagen um hiding down in the main lobby area uh it was behind a uh kind of a planner or whatnot um it was kind of sort of well hidden but it doesn't look well hidden but i assure you it was it was well hidden pretty good um and they had little pieces of paper in there that just said you know hey uh if you find this please post it to your Instagram, tag us, let us know you found it, yada, yada, yada. Um, and as far as I know, um, all the models that were hidden, uh, people did tag and they were found, which was pretty cool. Um, some of the other cool stuff that I saw uh, as far as Saturday goes, um, I did see this this Hyundai. Now, this is this Hyundai. Um, I thought this was like a Patrol um, or maybe even a uh, original uh, Pajero, uh, Mitsubishi Pajero. But um, no, this was a Hyundai, and it's funny because um, I ran into the guy who was not even in the car show. He just happened to park next to the car show, and I thought it was part of the car show. Uh, tar started talking to him. He was uh, uh, in the Army, and he was stationed there in New Mexico. He had uh, actually come over from Korea and uh, brought the vehicle with him. It was pretty cool. It's just a standard left-hand drive, nothing fancy with it. Uh, but I thought it was kind of cool. He had a little sticker on the back that says equipped with an anti-theft device because of course, of course there was. That is definitely the ultimate anti-theft device, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, so they did things a little bit different this year. We were able to pick up our dinner models around 2 o'clock. Uh, these are the two dinner models, of course. 64 Chevy C10, long bed, 
moving parts. Uh, the uh, early bird one is on the top. The original or the regular one, I should say, is on the bottom. The uh, kind of a greenish teal. Um, I like them. They're pretty cool. Um, I'm not a big Chevy guy, but uh, you know the decos and stuff look cool. I like the kind of patina look to them. Um, and, you know, and they're they're kind of promoting this, you know, like travel and, and stuff like that. And there's there's a lot of backstory to that stuff that unfortunately I didn't really get into too much with with Jim and uh, and Michael. But uh, there is a specific reason to have the deco on there. Of course, there is the logo for the model itself for the gathering. It's relatively prominently on there, but it's it's not too bad. Um, that is a there is a uh, brand new wheel on this particular truck, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, the wheel is essentially based uh, on kind of a Mercedes style of wheel, but um, they can use it for a bunch of other stuff. It doesn't have like a Mercedes logo on it or anything, um, so I thought that did a pretty good job. Um, as far as auction goes, of course we did have the dinner. The dinner was uh, kind of an interesting thing last year. It was a um, uh, it was a uh, buffet style. This year they just served you a plate, which is perfectly fine. This is a bunch of the auction stuff. This is exactly what it looks like when you go to do the auction. Uh, they give you a printout, and you can write down all the stuff. You can put marks on there if you want to bid on it. You see everything has a number on it. Uh, most of these are pre-pros. There's some Toy Fair stuff in there, some secret catalogs. Um, some books and stuff like that, uh, from the Leipzig toy show, which is pretty cool. Um, some regular wheel stuff in there. Um, there was a uh, Chris Spangler, uh, bone shaker custom set in there. Um, you know, that guy, you know, he's, he's no longer with us, but, uh, you know, it was pretty cool. Uh, a lot of people got together to buy those, some custom drag buses, uh, quite a few, uh, not matchbox items this year. Um, there, of course, there is a Divco. I actually did win that Divco. I bid on that Divco. Got a pretty good deal on it. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, kind of a uh, exploded view of a models of yesteryear up there in the frame. Uh, these are pre-pros. These launcher packs are pre-pros. Um, some other pre-pros and things like that. Um, just a little bit of everything. They had a RLC Pink Skyline. Um, I think it went for like 140 I think. Uh, which is a little bit a little bit up there. Of course, uh, John Lambert was not there. Uh, Lamely himself was unfortunately not there this year. Um, but they did have a really nice, cool bundle here. So these are three all-signed models. Um, also comes with the uh, custom mat uh, that he did. Um, and I really, really, really wanted this set. Um, I bid on it uh, quite extensively. I think I bid it up to well over 100 bucks for the set. I'm not sure what it ended up selling for. But I backed out because I just didn't want, to, uh, didn't want to do it. Just didn't want to do it. Uh, some other stuff here, just, um, you know, average stuff. A lot of posters. People go crazy over the posters, which is nuts. Um, it's just kind of the way it is. I had a buddy who really, really, really wanted this uh, pre-pro real working rig scraper. Um, and he gave me a limit of uh, like 375 to bid on it. And I bid it. I bid it all the way to 375 and then it ended up selling for $500. Um, I'll tell you what, man, people, people came to buy this year. There's no doubt. Uh, pretty cool collector's set there uh, that is matching numbers um, for the entire national set, uh, which is pretty cool. And, of course, um, yours truly did buy that. I did win that at auction. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with that yet, but, uh, you yeah. know, it's in the possession of Level M. Uh, some other stuff here. Now, this is funny because in the background there, you'll see that there's the uh, Ford GT, which is the dealer model. Um, that had not been discussed yet. We did not know the dealer model yet. It was going to be unveiled, um, but it just was there, and it was just signed up, and there you go. So it uh, there really was no no lead up to it. It was just like, oh yeah, that's the dealer model. Have a nice day, <laughs> which was like okay, it was kind of interesting. Um, I think there was about seventy eight lot items, um, and of course this is uh, Abe getting ready to do the presentation uh, on the gathering stuff and whatnot. Um, they had some issues. I think if you live stream this, you probably had some issues. This is kind of the way it looks like. It's uh, kind of an interesting setup when they do the uh, presentation. Of course, this is, of course, the 2023 mainline. Um, I am going to uh, see if I can edit this correctly for you guys so I can show you the, the model itself. And then, of course, the pre-pros and stuff that were there. I did try to take some pictures. Um, this is kind of the... Um, Last mixes of the year. Uh, this is kind of where we're sitting with the uh, end of them. So you have a mix 9, 10, 11, and 12. 
um, to round out the year. I do kind of find it funny because none of these mixes particularly show um, like the assortments and stuff like that. Like you don't know how many of each you're getting, um, but at least it does show what comes in each mix. Of course, mix number nine will have your Macon Super Chase. Mix 10 will have the next Target Red Edition, which is a Porsche. Uh, there is nothing particularly special in Mix 11. And then the final mix of the year, uh, Mix 12, will have the final Red Edition, which will be the Ford Raptor, uh, which were both kind of shown up. A um, little bit of better. I, I, it was really, really difficult because there was a lot of light in the room, and it was really hard to try to get the light to go away so you could get a good shot. Um, but it, it, it kind of worked out. It kind of worked out. Um, so as far as basic mixes, uh, this is the final mix of the year. Uh, should be mix 12. Um, you'll do notice that, uh, of course, there is a SpaceX item in there. That is the SpaceX capsule. That is the same capsule um, that recently showed up in that, uh, you know, kind of Mattel Creations black box. Uh, you can, actually, you can buy one on Amazon right now. Um, I think you can even buy them from Village Diecast as well. Um, but that is the final mix of the year. Of course, it is going to be a quite loaded mix. It's the holiday season. That's what they want. All right, kicking it off for the new models for 2023. Of course, we do have the Morgan Plus 4, which looks pretty good. Um, not a huge, huge fan of this particular um, model, I guess. But, you know, a lot of people are going to like it. The, the pre-pro was there. It's just a printed up mock-up. Um, just rolling on some tri spokes. Uh, did have the Volkswagen. This is the uh, Mark 7 Volkswagen or the whatever the newest Volkswagen is. Uh, brand, brand spanking new one. Uh, interesting one with this one is they did have a metal mock up for it, which was kind of cool because um, that means that it's going to be in a new mix uh, or at least a recent mix uh, for 2024. Uh, probably even mix one or mix two. Uh, Jaguar XJ6C, this is of course the coupe of the XJ6. They did have two uh, models there. They had one that was uh, an engineering type of pilot, and then of course they had one that was a final engineering pilot. Pilot. So this one will debut in blue, uh, which will look pretty decent. Uh, Jeep Wagoneer, this one is, I really am happy they're doing this one. I'm really excited. Uh, this one was just a, a 3D print. Uh, but it looked fantastic. It looked really, really good. The details look good. The proportions looked really good. Um, I really, I really think this one's going to be pretty good. I don't like the utility six spoke that they put on the the mock up one. Um, but you know, if they put a decent wheel on, I think it'll be nice. All right, 1983 Ford Fiesta Mark II. Um, I do believe they had a pre pro of this too. Um, if they do, it'll be on the screen for sure. I will uh, make sure I put those together. Uh, but this one's kind of an interesting mix. I was hoping that they would do a different era of Fiesta, but um, just kind of cool. They're doing a little hatchback. Uh, Infinity QX80 2022. Of course, they had a 3D mock-up of this one as well. Um, right next to the Wagoneer. Looked pretty good. Uh, they look they look well-sized to each other, so I'm pretty happy about that. The Alfa Romero Tonale. Oh, I mean Tone. Tonale. Um... It's just ridiculous. Uh, it's it's exactly a Dodge Hornet. Um, this one is, is meh. Um, I do think there is a pre-pro of this one as well, so I will uh, I'll get this on there as well. So I do apologize about the pre-pros. I have to I have to match them up. Like w when the pre-pros open to take pictures, like you got to just get crazy. All right, brand spanking new generation 2023 Ford Interceptor. I'm really happy they're updating this casting. It's going to be a brand new casting, but. Um, they're going to replace it, and I, I'm really happy about that. The mirrors and stuff are just too big on that interceptor. Just It's not proportionally right, uh, and the new one looks really good, really good. It does have a um, first-run mock-up on it, which looks really good. Uh, Indiana Jones Tuck Tuck, they do have a uh, mock-up of this one as well. Uh, it's kind of cool. It will have some rips on the top of the canopy part um for the um you know the uh, topping of it or whatever so i think that'll look kind of cool a couple of other indiana jones stuff will be coming down the pipeline uh 64 jeep wagoneer um i do not think they had a pre-pro of this one there i don't think they had anything going with this one um but um i could definitely uh double check and of course if it's on the screen then that means they did and i must have missed it all right 68 chevy c10 yes matchbox jumping on the square body bandwagon because of course they are 
Uh, this is just going to be, again, for the basic range, no moving parts or anything, uh, but it looks fantastic. And, of course, it's going to be matchbox style, which means it'll be completely bone stock. Bone stock, and it'll look fantastic because it'll have those disco wheels on it. All right, Porsche 911 Cabriolet, totally not biased, totally not biased about this one. It's totally stoked about this one. Um, I really like the fact that they're doing two versions. There will be a top-up and a top-down version. Um, how that will be used or distributed, I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, but they did have some engineering pilots for both of those. Um, I'm really excited about those. I'm hoping that they're doing that um, with whatever they're doing. So um, I'm not sure how the mixes will go. It'll be kind of like an interior variation, but it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be good. All right, uh, Nissan Pathfinder. Uh, really excited about this one too. Really, really happy about this one. I think this is an awesome SUV to choose. Um, very, very unique uh, style to it. I feel like it'll probably be too small proportionally. Um, it, it'll probably suffer the same feature as the uh, first generation 4Runner casting that they did. It's a little bit small in my opinion too. Uh, Mercedes-Benz EQB. Uh, they're still rolling with some electric cars because of course they have to. That's just the way that it works, unfortunately. Um, but it is what it is. It's an SUV, so it'd be all right. All right, uh, original generation Ford Bronco. Now, I can tell you that the engineering pilot uh, does not look very good, in my opinion. I really don't think it looks very good. Um, it definitely looks like a Bronco. Um, I just I feel like it's a little bit too wide um, in its proportions. So, <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. But we're getting it regardless. Looks pretty good. Uh, Supra. Of course, a Supra. Um, really, really just, it's whatever. I mean, everybody makes a Supra. Literally everybody makes one. And now Matchbox is going to make one too. Um, at least this one will be bone stock. Not that nobody else makes bone stock. But, uh, you know, there was an uh, engineering pilot or an engineering sample. Maybe a 3D mock-up as well. And take a look at that. Um, it's meh, it's meh. Uh, Citroen EC4. Um, I like the fact that they're getting diverse with their models. Um, it seems like they're getting relatively, uh, French heavy, um, which is fine. They're definitely going hard in the paint with Citroen. And I think that that's probably a good start to get some good footing in Europe, but, um, just kind of interesting. They're doing a lot of Citroens. Um, Yes, Matchbox making another uh, motorcycle. 1966 Ducati Scrambler. Uh, this one was in a mock-up state. Uh, I think it was a 3D print, um, but it looked good. I mean, it looked like the average motorcycles that Matchbox been doing with the off-road wheel. Uh, a little bit of their own flavor. It's kind of meh. Uh, 63 Mercedes-Benz SLW113. Uh, there was a pretty nice mock-up done. Um, I think the proportions look absolutely fantastic on this one. I'm really excited for this one. Of course, Matchbox did the modern SL this year, uh, which will debut, I believe, in Mix 10. I think it'll debut in Mix 10 um, in blue. It'll have a new wheel on it, too, which will be pretty nice, a new lace wheel, um, which will be kind of cool. We'll kind of get a, a yin and yang. Um, another engineering pilot that was there was for the 64 Lincoln Continental. I was a little worried that the proportions weren't going to be right, but the proportions actually look very, very good. Um, especially when it's sitting next to other models and you can tell it's not going to be too big or too small. Well, I guess they can't go too big. I mean, they, they're restricted by the size of the, uh, blister, uh, 22 Opel Astra. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool car. I've actually never seen, uh, the Opel Astra 2022 Opel Astra before. Um, uh, but I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I think they had a mock-up as well. Um, again, if it's, if they had one, it's on the screen. I do apologize. I just, there's a lot of pictures. There's a lot of pictures. Uh, Radical Motorsport SRA. I'm really happy that Matchbox gets to do some racing stuff. Um, Hot Wheels has always been very, very uh, strict with not letting them do that. It's been that way for quite some time. Of course, that's what Hot Wheels does. They do race cars. They have race tracks, um, all that good stuff like that. I'm just really happy that Matchbox gets to throw it in there. And of course, Matchbox has to do something completely off the wall, um, which is perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. So that is the 2023 mainline mix. Now, we're going to move into... Uh, 2024 five packs. Now, I don't want you guys to get dead set on the castings, um, right now, but, uh, it looks like these are going to be your themes, electric drivers, Autobahn Express, British drivers, MBX City Live, MBX Construction for the first set. Um, those, some of those look pretty good. Uh, Autobahn looks especially nice because there's a 
911 GT3 in there. And of course, there is the uh, Volkswagen transporter truck, which means there will be two interiors for that one, which means you'll have to buy two packs to get those. Uh, British drivers, hopefully that Levesque taxi somehow, some way can have something different with it um, because they've released that thing in black like a bazillion times. It's never changed. Uh, next setup of 2024 five packs, of course, MBX JDM, which is more than likely going to be all carry forward models. Uh, Blue Highways, MBX Retro. MBX Retro is going to be very exciting. Um, maybe not necessarily for the models, but MBX Retro is going to be just like the Target Retro. So it's going to have some old school throwback uh, card art and everything on there. Um, it's going to look really, really good in the package. I'm not really sure what we'll get out of the models as far as what is shown on there. Um, they're all carry forward decos on those, unfortunately. Uh, Coffee Cruisers and then MBX Trucks with, of course, the Rock Shocker. We have not seen the Rock Shocker in a very long time. Um, I do like that casting. It looks pretty good. I had a friend make me a custom at one point in time. All right, 2024 nine packs. Um, so Matchbox is going to be moving to the eight packs just like Hot Wheels did. However, they won't do it until about uh, close to mid mid-year next year. So your first set, of course, is the Audi e-tron and the uh, Plymouth Savoy. And then you do have a Unimog for the next set and a 75 MG, MG, MGB GT. Um, and then for the third set, we have, of course, the driving self-driving bus and the Mercedes-Benz AMG GT63. Um, that self-driving bus, by the way, will have National Parks Deco. So uh, look out for that one. It will be pretty nice. Um, and then this is probably where it's going to change to eight packs. Um, and then you're going to go to the next wave, which is going to be the International Ambulance, a 1976 guy like Eldorado convertible, which we have really not seen much of. Um, and then Nissan Xterra, Volkswagen Golf GTI. The GTI, of course, will have an interior variation, which means you'll have to pick up two of them. And then rounding out the year will be the Honda Insight and, of course, the 56 Morris Minor, uh, which is a new model this year, which has yet to debut. Not out yet. Not quite out yet. All right, Matchbox World of Diecast is what they call it. Uh, moving on to 2024 moving parts. Um, this one will be kind of interesting. So Ford Focus RS. Um, really happy they're doing this one. I think the uh, Ford Focus RS is pretty cool. Um, pretty excited to see. Um, hopefully they do this Blue Deco. That's what I'm hoping for. I don't know if they're going to do the Blue Deco, but I hope so. Um, but it has opening hood. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Jaguar I-Pace. Um, I don't believe they had a mock-up of the I-Pace um, on display um, other than maybe just a 3D rendering potentially. So I'm not sure what item is going to be opening on that guy. Uh, 1978 Ford Bronco. Um, so the mock-up they have actually has a separate piece for the back section um, and then it has an opening hood. But I did talk to the design team. It is going to be a separate part. Uh, but it won't be removable. Um, unfortunately, you will not be able to remove the back uh, because it is a safety issue, but uh, that would be super, super cool if you could. Uh, Porsche Taken GTS Sport Turismo. They did have a mock-up of this one. Um, it wasn't really showing what it's going to do. Um, I'm assuming it's it could be an opening hatch potentially, um, or more than likely it will be opening doors, um, hopefully not an opening frunk. Um, because that would be kind of boring. Uh, 69 Triumph Spitfire. Uh, this guy, if I remember correctly, will have an opening hood. Uh, so nothing really fancy on that one. Just pretty standard fare. Uh, moving on to the next one. 2022 Opal Mocha. Um, just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's kind of a cool looking SUV, but uh, I don't know. It's just one of those things that you know it's not going to do well in the U.S. It's just not. You just know it's not going to do well in the U.S. Um, as far as the opening feature, hopefully it's a rear hatch, uh, but we'll see. Uh, 1995 Chevy C10 pickup. Um, yes, yes. Um, kind of skipped the um, kind of skipped the um, square body generate. Well, it's still a square body, I guess, but uh, it's not really an OBS. But it looks good. This one is going to have opening hood. It's also going to have opening tailgate. So you're going to have two moving features, uh, which is stupid rare. Um, but you'll notice that they might be starting to do that a little bit more. Uh, Audi RS6 Avant. This will have an opening hatch. This one uh, did have a mock-up. It's actually already uh, a engineering pilot, which looks pretty good. 
uh, like when they are engineering pilots. That means they're right around the corner. Uh, yes, Matchbox is going to have a tie-in with Harry Potter. Um, they are doing the Ford Angela. Um, it is going to have two opening features. You'll have an opening doors and then it'll have opening trunk. Um, not a fan of Harry Potter. Not a fan. But, uh, hey, if it gets us an extra casting, so be it. Uh, 2023 uh, Prius Prime. Not too shocked the fact that they're doing the Prius Prime because um, they made, you know, the other generation Prius. Um, and the license with Toyota is pretty strong right now. So this one hopefully will have an opening hatch. I'm not really sure what it's going to have opening. The mock-up didn't have any kind of openings or anything like that on it. So um, we'll see. Uh, 73 BMW CSL. This one uh, was in a engineering pilot. Uh, lamely, actually. Uh, previewed this casting already. John Lambert, this does have a front hinged uh, hood, which is pretty nice. Um, so it'll be the second time we're getting one of those style of models. We just got one recently. Uh, Land Rover Series 2 FC Camper. Um, have no idea what's going to be a moving part on this. Probably the doors. Um, I'm very confident there was not even a mock up of this uh, available to, to view um, at the gathering. Uh, 70 uh, AMC Javelin. Uh, this one's kind of cool. Uh, this one does have a opening hood, of course, because it's a muscle car. Um, but I think this one will be pretty cool. I like the fact that we'll get some muscle cars in the mix. Um, I think that uh, that's kind of where Matchbox is uh, lacking a little bit, uh, at least in my opinion. Uh, Alfa Romero uh, Stelvio. Um, just another SUV. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's really nothing fancy. Um, I can tell you that that probably means that Alfa Romero's um, licensing with uh, Mattel, or at least with Matchbox, is strong. Uh, Porsche 356 Coupe, this one is going to be super cool. It will have an opening uh, engine cover in the back, so it'll have a little, 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 teeny, tiny opening part on it, uh, which I think will be super, super cool. Uh, pretty excited about that one, of course, because I like Porsche. BMW iX, uh, I don't believe there was a mock-up of this at the gathering um, my assumption, or my, I guess my prediction, well, there was a mock-up, actually, there was a mock-up, there was a 3D print, um, but there was no indication on, uh, opening features or anything like that, um, so I'm, I would say probably the doors, um, but a hatch would be nice, it's electric, so it won't be under the hood, uh, 1990 new, 1992 Buick Roadmaster, um, it's literally got to be the hatch, it's literally got to have an opening hatch in the back, uh, there was a 3D rendering of this one. Again, does not show what feature moves. Nissan Town Star. So this one is going to be very interesting because this one is going to have dual sliding doors. There will be two sliding doors, one on each side of it. Um, and I'm really excited about that. Really excited about that. That is a super, super cool feature. I'm really happy they're doing that. Really excited about that. And then, of course, the Corvair ramp side pickup. There was not a mock-up of this one there, but it will indeed have the ramp on the side. That will be uh, folding down to load it or whatnot. Bizar Bizarini 5300 Corsa Revival. This was a, there was a mock-up of there uh, for this particular model. Um, I feel like Matchbox has to really go out into the, you know, obscureness to, to kind of get the era of cars that they want to get. I'm sure they wanted some, some real classic race car. And it probably makes it difficult with Hot Wheels. Um, this one will just have an opening hood. It won't be anything fancy, um, but I think the final version will probably look pretty good. Hopefully it's decoed up just like that, which would be pretty nice. There is, of course, the master list. We just went over it. A couple of different pictures for the exact same models we just talked about. It doesn't specify which one is going to open. All right, theme assortments we moved on to. Um, these are going to be like the Walmart ones and things like that. Now, the good thing about this is they actually do tell us which models are being carried forward um, and which models are going to be new, okay? So, of course, this is MBX County Rescue. Uh, we're going to have a Ram Police, which is be new. 57 GMC Pickup will be new. And then, of course, a Caprice will be new. Those will be new decos. But then we're going to carry forward of the Freightliner M102. This Freightliner has been released with this deco like seven times. And I, I don't, I, I just, it blows my mind that we can't get a deco for this particular casting. It's literally been the same red version over and over and over and over. I was shocked when we actually got a new version 
in the Silver 70th set that was at Walmart. I was shocked. I was shocked. Um, the Flame Tamer in yellow, that's been re-released. It's actually been released in this deco, um, I think, twice already. Um, and then, of course, the Buick Century Chief Fire or Police Chief Fire Chief. That one's been um, only released one time in that deco. So we're going to get a new version. Hopefully there's something different about it. I'm not going to hold my breath. Um, but you'll see there's little CFs on the bottom rows. And on the top it says a new deco. All right, mini brand OEM. Uh, this will be a mini uh, Cooper, mini brand uh, assortment. I don't, I don't anticipate this set will do that great, but I could be wrong. Uh, new deco on, of course, the 64 Austin Mini Cooper, the Austin uh, Mini Van. Uh, we also get a new deco on. And then, of course, the uh, Mini Cooper Convertible. So those are the ones we get new decos on. Uh, the original Mini Cooper or the New Age Mini Cooper uh, from around the um, you know Hero City era. Um, that one will be a carry forward in red. Uh, the Countryman will be a carry forward in yellow. And then it looks like we're going to get another 64 Austin Mini Cooper. So we get two of the same models in the same set. I guess that uh, I guess they don't have enough Mini Coopers in the range uh, to give us six cars. I'm not really sure why they chose to do that. It's ridiculous. All right. Off-Road Rally 2. Uh, this follows up a very good set. I'm very, very disappointed uh, that this one is an all brand new decos, but that Chevy Colorado looks absolutely fantastic in blue and black. That one looks really, really stunning. Uh, the uh, Jeep, so uh, Jeep that's been around for a long time, uh, former Kenner casting. Um, we get a new deco on that, which is pretty nice. The Volkswagen Golf Country, that one has an interior variation, so that one will be kind of interesting. Um, hopefully there's more than one per case, uh, but it is a brand new deco on that one. And then your carry forwards, of course, are the International Scout, which we've already seen that particular deco three times already. Um, we'll get a reissue on the Toyota FJ40. That one came out uh, many years ago, um, and I believe that was with the original version of the casting. So this one will be good because this will be the uh, updated casting with the uh, more plastic, less metal. And then, of course, the Ridge Raider. That one was in the original or the first release of the Off-Road Rally. Um, this one in a re-release deco from a while ago. Um, I think that the wheels will probably be different because I think they had a... Uh, they think they used the slaw blade wheels potentially back in the day. Uh, next assortment, uh, American Convertibles Series. Of course, new one we have is 63 Chevy uh, Corvette. That is a brand spanking new tool. So that is a little bit different. There was a uh, mock-up shown of that as well. Uh, 75 Cadillac Eldorado convertible, new deco on that guy. Uh, Chevy Camaro 2016 convertible, new deco on that one. Um, and then, of course, your carry forwards, which is a really, really, really bad assortment. So you do have the Curtis Sports Car, um, which just came out. All we've gotten it in is the red and the blue, uh, and they're already going to re-release re -release the red. Really disappointed in that. The Ford Mustang convertible in blue. Uh, this came out in the Mustang series, I think, um, and it was an absolute disaster peg warmer. And now we're going to get it again. Um, and then to round it out, it is the 53 Buick Skylark uh, in its original debut deco color. Um, if they don't put a chrome base on it, then it'll be a new version. Um, but hopefully they put a chrome base on it because it needs to be. Now, I am going to severely apologize to you right now uh, because this picture is unbelievably blurry. And I'm very, very, very sorry that this picture is unbelievably blurry, okay? This is next year's red editions, okay? Um, the first one is going to be the Dodge Coronet police car, um, which is pretty nice. You'll also get the uh, Gallardo uh, police car, which is okay. You'll get the MX-5 Miata. We'll also do the Honda 1 E1, the electric car. Um, then the Dodge Charger Pursuit, um, which is a very, very nice one. And then rounding it out will be the Holden Ute, um, pickup truck. So I do apologize that that is so bad. Um, I'm not really sure why it turned out so horribly, but at least, at least I know what the models are and I can tell you what the models are. Um, so there you go. All right. Real working rigs. Yes, we are still going to get real working rigs in 2024, but the matchbox team really could care less about the line. Um, just being honest with you. So there will be four mixes next year. Uh, maybe five mixes. 
Um, but each mix is only going to have one new model. <coughs> only one new one. So in mix A, the crop sprayer is going to be the new version. Uh, and then the rest of them are going to be carry forwards. The second mix, you'll have a new deco for the Western Star dump truck. Uh, the rest will be carry forwards. Um, in mix C, we do get a new tool. There was some pre-pros, uh, a pre-pro showed of this. Um, it's a man um, city bus. Um, it'll have two double opening doors, and then there'll be a little ramp that comes out, kind of like wheelchair access. Um, it looks pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. Looks like a real working rig. It looks like it does features, has moving parts and whatnot. Uh, Mix D, um, it does claim that there will be a new tool. Um, according to the sheet, it's going to be an airport fire truck. Um, what that could be, I don't know. There was no pre-pros or nothing set up there. I'm really hoping it's not a generic, um, but I guess at the fact of it just being a new tool, um, I guess I guess it's a new tool. So I guess we'll just have to take what we can get. But uh, only four mixes next year. Only four mixes, four models per mix, six, 16 cars or 16 rigs for the year. Um, it's just carry forward stuff. So it's just really not going to sell on the pegs. So it's, it's, it's limited. Uh, Skybusters, of course, there's going to be a bunch of Skybuster stuff. Not something we do on the channel, but they do have some new tools, uh, mainly Airbus stuff, um, which is okay. I think the uh, big old A300 uh, giant beluga looking thing is going to be pretty cool. That'll be a pretty pretty cool tie-in. Um, this is the whole mix. I know this is going to be uh, difficult to uh, view, um, but the cool thing about Skybusters next year, we're getting a bunch of stuff for um, SpaceX and stuff like that. So I'm pretty excited about those. Again, the Falcon rocket and some other stuff. Really excited about those to drop. Uh, Matchbox Collectors. Uh, Matchbox Collectors is continuing in 2024. However, this is your final mix of the year. Uh, this should round out the mix, uh, the uh, entire set, I believe, of 2023. Uh, it is going to be the Chevy Camaro Edelbrock, the Volkswagen T2 bus, um, a, um, I think it's a Triumph, uh, MG something, um, uh, but that's a new, brand new model, brand new casting, uh, Lexus LFA, brand new casting with a brand new wheel. And then of course the Monte Carlo, uh, as far as 2024, um, so these are kind of a mixture here. Um, so these, I don't think any of these castings, I'm not really sure why they say that these castings are 2023 collector, but, um, these are all new tools. Okay, so you have your 77 Aston Martin V8 Vantage on the bottom. Uh, there is a Mazda Savannah RX-3, the uh, Mercedes-Benz EQS, Oldsmobile 442. Um, that one will have opening doors. Uh, the Subaru BRZ, there was a mock-up of the Subaru BRZ. Uh, that is not an opening parts. There was also a mock-up of the 70 Toyota Celica GT, which I'm pretty excited about. I'm pretty happy they're doing that one. Um, but those will not be moving parts either. So that whole mix... Just the Oldsmobile, I believe, will be the only one with uh, opening doors. Uh, 2024 Matchbox Collectors. This is going to be your first mix of 2024. Um, this one looks pretty good. This one looks pretty good. Uh, bringing back the uh, Ford panel truck, the F100 panel truck. Of course, there is your Bugatti Devo in premium, exactly where it needs to be. Um, it's going to look fantastic. Look, going to look fantastic. Uh, we get the uh, 3000 GT in premium too. Looks good in cream. Lexus uh, GX or LX, I should say, uh, SUV. This is a new casting. Um, that'll debut this year in moving parts and then it'll be in the collector line next year. And then, of course, the uh, Nissan 400Z. Um, moving on to the premium treatment. All right, here are some actual uh uh, FEP models that they had showing off. Um, of course, real working rigs. Uh, you see that guy, one guy in the back, a little pre-pro. I got some better pictures, but Convoy here. Um, this is the only other stuff of Convoys we're going to get. Uh, that Matchbox tanker truck and the 70th anniversary one. Those are two brand new decos. Um, the real working rig right here looks pretty good. Uh, just a 3D rendering mock-up, nothing fancy about it. Um, just a couple other shots here. The models included with the rigs. Uh, that is a Ford Courier. That white truck is a Ford Courier. That's a brand new casting. 
Um, coming to the collector, the Mattel Creations collector line next year, uh, the ones you order from Mattel Creations is going to be this Jeep right here. This is going to be, um, I was told, or from what I remember, let's put it that way, um, is that that's going to be Indiana Jones, but the Jeep is way too new era to be Indiana Jones, so I'm not really sure where that's going to be tied into, but very interesting Jeep nonetheless. A um, couple other um, FEP models here. Of course, so you do have the Nissan Araya. Behind that is the um, uh, Chevy Trailblazer. We do have the next color for the Ram um, in white. There is your Lexus LX behind there. Um, that orange GTO on the left, that is a Super Chase. That would have been in the moving parts model uh, casting shakedown we just did the other day. Unfortunately, I didn't get one. Uh, Lancer in blue. Looks fantastic. There is the Super Chase Mustang, the RX-7 we just saw. And then, of course, there is a uh, Tesla Model Y, I think, uh, moving parts, doors opening, uh, still coming out this year. Uh, there is some Skybuster stuff with the Falcon 9 Heavy Rockets. Looks super, super cool. Excited for those. Um, some more uh, models here. Of course, you do see a um, really nice one there with that Lamborghini with the doors open. I do believe that is a collector's model. So that'll be in the collector's line. Um, some other stuff here. There is that green Triumph right next to that lime green Porsche RSR. Yes, that is a Porsche RSR. That will debut in the Mattel Creations, um, you know, super fancy boxes. You know, you buy it from Mattel Creations. So I'm pretty excited about that one. It's a much, much better shot. Um, that one doesn't have any moving parts or features um, that, I'm well, uh, that I'm aware of, but it looks pretty cool. There is your LFA. It does have a new wheel. Not a fan of the wheel. Uh, seeing that wheel up close is just not very good. Uh, definitely not interested in that wheel at all. Um, there is your uh, weird Citroen there. Um, the DX4, D something, something. Um, better shot of the Lambo there. And then, of course, we did get that Ford sedan. Uh, you'll see that uh, black G Wagon there in the right corner. That is the next Super Chase. So. I'm not sure if that is going to be the final Super Chase for 2023 or if that's the first Super Chase for 2024, uh, but we'll find out. Um, Lancer looks fantastic in blue. Really excited about that one. Um, there is your Sprinter van in the back that will be in Mix uh, 8. I believe that will be Mix 8 moving parts this year. That digger right there, that was actually moved into the line. They had some changes done. Um, so that guy and the blue F-150 in front of him, those are two models that uh, Abe was able to move in. Uh, those have brand new decos, by the way. So very exciting about those. We haven't seen that casting for a little bit. So just something different. Uh, there is the um, bus, the mail-in bus. So if you haven't mailed in your receipts to try to get that bus with your $20 purchase, I would suggest to do it. The rest of the 70th anniversary stuff there, just real quick. Back to SpaceX, because of course... Better shot of your G-Wagon Cabrio uh, Super Chase. Of course, it is done up just like all the rest of the German ones. There is your Lexus LX with the opening hatch. I really like that. I'm really digging it. Better shot of the Lancer. Full prints underneath the hood. I think it looks really good with the five spokes uh, versus the D10s that it debuted on. So there is your man. This one has the double sliding doors that open. Then there's a ramp that comes out. Um, it is pretty decently sized, too. Um, it does take a mainline disc hub wheel, but um, I think that's fine um, for this particular instance. It looks pretty good. There is your Sprinter van. does use the newer off-road wheel. One giant sliding panel on the side. Um, looks absolutely fantastic. Can't wait. Uh, Chevy Tahoe, that one is also coming to the moving parts. I think that's going to be in the final mix of this year with an opening hood. There's that F-150 in the background. Lexus LFA. This is the model with the new five-spoke uh, Real Riders tire. tire. It, just, it just does not look good. Too much tire. Way too much tire. Um, but it doesn't look good. It just doesn't look good. Um, the Bolade, Bolard, um, not really, I don't remember what this truck's called. Uh, but it's an electric truck. And, of course, it does have the pass-through that goes all the way from the front trunk, front, front trunk to the back. Um, and then, of course, he has two moving features, opening hood and opening tailgate. Uh, which looks super, super cool. Moving parts again. And then just an overview of the entire uh, kind of breakdown, the um, display cases and stuff that they had there. 
Uh, just some, some super cool stuff. Nothing fancy about it. Um, really hard to take pictures. You really have to move quick. Um, you just got to snap, 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 and just keep moving. Um, it's really, really difficult when everybody jumps up there to get all those shots. But uh, I'm just glad I got the shots I could bring to you guys. So they look pretty good. Then, of course, finally, there is the couple of models that are still coming out this year. There is the Coenseg uh, next to the RX-8 in black. A little bit of glare on there. There's your Volvo XC that debuted as well. Um, some of those final packages have been showing up. Uh, in, pa in you know picture or whatever. That is a Jeep Avenger. Um, that is a new Jeep. I'm assuming it's going to be coming out next year. Um, if it hasn't already been uh, shown. Uh, they also had a mock-up for the Silverado EV. That one is still in process. Um, I do believe that one was slated to be this year. I think it got moved unfortunately but that pretty much rounds it out uh for the most part uh moving on from kind of the dinner or whatever um of course i had my room set up when i was doing in-room trading for all the other times that i wasn't looking at models uh got rid of a lot of stuff sold a lot of stuff met a lot of cool people um made some space uh just had a really fun time there is your dealer model of course it was the ford gt uh, which was super, super cool. Moving parts. Classic. I think it looks really good with the more aggressive tire um, with the tri-spokes. I just think it was a cool look to it. I uh, was pretty happy about that. It was uh, relatively painless to get them as well. So very, very happy about that. It turned out pretty good. And then, of course, you know, all good things do come to an end. And, of course, we had to move on from the gathering uh, and make our way uh, back to good old Denver and uh, get back on with some other stuff. So there we go. That was the whole rundown of the uh, Matchbox Gathering, the recap and stuff. Definitely drop some comments. Definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, it was a lot of stuff. I know you guys have seen a lot of this stuff by now, but I'm interested to hear what you got to say. So we're going to roll out. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Leveling.cast.